guys ever uh, practice engine out stuff? Not in a T-38. I mean, single engine, yeah. Single engine landings. Yeah. But not, I mean, dual engine flame outs, no. That yeah, would well, be exactly. only in the simulator. Simulators are really good for shit like that. Yeah. Three, one. Today, we're going to do, uh, we're going to actually practice for real in this airplane, engine out uh, on takeoff. We're going to practice a couple of different ways. So stick with us and see what it's like. Hey, I'm Scott Perdue, and we have Michael Harm Zumbregel and Lenny Winning in the back. They're both German Air Force guys. They fly T-38s at uh, Wichita Falls at Shepard Air Force Base, and uh, they're going to come on and see what we do things, how we do things at GA airplanes today. Michael's going to do the flying. We're going to do takeoff, engine failure practice. But we're not going to do it close to the ground. We're going to do it about 3,000 feet, and uh, we're going to see how things go. So. Stick with us here, and we'll see what happens. We're going to set maneuver. We're going to fly over the airport. We're at Mineral Wells, Texas. We're going to fly over the airport, and we're going to act like uh, ground level is 3,000 feet. Okay, the first one is going to be uh, VX climb, which is 84 knots, and we're going to have an engine failure about 100 feet just to uh, see what the reaction time is going to be. And to uh, make matters worse, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to wait three seconds because uh, psychologists all say that it takes uh, the human being about three seconds uh, to recognize and then react to uh, any particular stimulus, you know, like your engine not working. So we want to be at 84 knots, and I want to put the gear down because we're going to have drag. Start your climb here at uh, 84 knots. Gonna wait three seconds, remember. There we go, there's our altitude. One potato, two potato, three potato. Now you can relax. 77. 81 is our target speed. So bam, we're right there on the ground, right there. All right, but what we saw out of that one was is uh, we wait three seconds, normal reaction okay, time. Good. You're on the ground. Yeah. And we were actually about 180 yeah, feet a one mile when I failed the engine. You know, it happens. You, you don't have much time to react at all. Your energy is decaying. We didn't approach the stall that closely, so we've got that going for us. So on the next one, we will still fly 81. Yeah, we're going to, well, our next one is going to be VX, that's 84 knots. Did you already execute your good? The next one's going to be VX, 84 knots, and at 700 feet, we're going to uh, have the engine failure. Okay. And uh, at that point, we're going to wait three seconds and see what happens. You know, do we have enough to turn back to the runway is uh, our objective to see if that happens. Okay, and you want me to try that as well, to turn back or? Yeah, yeah. when you're looking, I mean, you know, you're using, you don't have quite the same cues because we're higher, but no. remember 3,000 feet is our new ground level. So and you want to keep 84 and then we turn while keeping 84? So no, your new target then is uh, 81. 81, okay. Yeah, 81 is the uh, book answer for uh, a minute of the emergency approach speed. Okay, cool. Okay, the VX fail at 700 feet with a three second uh, wait. There's the end of the runway. I'm going to give you power so you can climb 84 knots. That's 200 feet. We're off the end of the runway. That's so good. that's at 300 feet, so there's no chance to land anymore going straight ahead. There's 500. 700. You got your speeds right. There's the power. One potato, two potato, three potato. Okay, you can lower your nose and we tickle the stall. Now you got to get back to 81. Can we turn back? Oh, maybe. At least I will try. Wind is from the right. You got 400 feet to go. Two hundred feet. Get pretty close to the ground. Hundred feet. Time to give up on that and land straight ahead. All right. Here comes the power and the gear. But we got further than I expected. Yeah. So that was better than I thought. Way. Yeah. We. 
talking about getting back to the runway, you know. Getting back, back to, to the, the runway, yeah. Well, I, I mean, there's at some point you got to say, hey, this is no good, I've got to quit in 100 feet. That's not much time. Okay, this one is, uh, we're going to accelerate the best glide speed, and which is 110, and then climb. And at 700, we're going to fail. We're going to wait three seconds again and see what happens. Okay. And we wait three seconds and then we go back to 81 or... Uh, no, we go three seconds and then you can turn. Okay. Okay. And uh, then you can also dump the nose, right? Okay. So you can, you can dump the nose and maneuver at that point. And then when you think you might be able to make the runway, then, uh, uh, then you can transition to 81. Okay. So part of it is me just being a pilot and thinking, hey, I will do this now? Yeah. Okay, cool. I was saying if the uh, recovery itself has to be scientific as well, like, hey, we start doing that at 81 knots or 84. Well, 84 is climb speed. It's a BX. Yeah. Climb speed. 81 is emergency approach speed, and it's a speed that you have enough energy that uh, you can flare. So we will do the same setup. We'll be at uh, 84, and then uh, when we hit the runway, um, I'll start feeding the power in, so then you can get uh, full power, and then you accelerate. We'll put the gear up at this point. Oh, yeah. And uh, when we're climbing, when, you, when we're climbing away from the new runway, and uh, then we'll see what happens. You're accelerating to 110. But look out the window and see if you can turn back. I think with a little bit extra energy, like there's really no way we could have done it the way we did it just then. But with 110 climb speed, and we have that happen at 700 feet, I think you have option. I think you have enough energy to have some option. Because 200, we were, uh, we were still short of the runway. Even yeah. if you ready, ready. Here's down. So now here comes the power. Let's get a, a bit of a climb going. Roger, that was in the pattern. Good. Minor wheels. Have you landed yet? All right. Gears coming up. All right. Accelerate. Traffic. November 7270, Tango. Clear 3-1. Minerals. Energy landed. Affirmative, we are clear 3-1. Thank you. Alright, there's 110. It's 300 feet. Six hundred feet. Seven hundred feet. Here comes engine fail. One potato, two potato, three potato. Clear to maneuver. So we got down to ninety-five. We lost fifteen knots. So actually here I'd go ahead and transition to mid sync because you're not interested in glide now. You're interested more in time. So let's transition to 81. 81. Keep the turn coming. Keep it coming. There's the runway back there. Coming up on 81. Got to get the nose down. All right, we're going to go around. Here comes power. Not even close. Not even close. Cool, I will go ahead and enter the left down one again. But you got turned around pretty well, so you might have made it into general area of the traffic pattern. I think the lesson learned out of that is, is you can at least get back towards the runway. With your at uh, best glide or best glide is your cruise climb speed, and uh, that gives you enough energy that you can get back there. You may not be able to get to the runway, but you can get in the general area. You got that much of a turn. You got time. You can decide do I want to try the runway or not. I mean, there's a little bit of error because we're 2,000 feet above the runway, yeah. so it's hard to judge that geometrically actually. So I think that gives you options. So let's try uh, one more, and that's transition into mid sync right away. We just start with bed glide, best glide burn, that altitude. I think if you had the immediate push, you would even have better 
energy. Okay. Left over. So, so this time not waiting for three times? Yeah, we're not going to wait, so you're ready for it. And uh, we're going to do this one at VX at 84 knots. And uh, we're going to climb out with that. And then we're going to see with an immediate push how much energy you have at 700 feet. Okay. Same altitude failure, but uh, slightly different profile. Okay. How does that sound? So we will climb at 84. Yeah, climb power at, cut at 700. Climb at 84, and then uh, we're power cut at 700, and you're cleared to do an immediate push. You don't have to wait for three potatoes. Okay. You're cleared to maneuver immediately. And then you want to see what kind of speed? 81 again? Ish? 81. Yep, good. Yeah. You have a final any? Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I would be interested in would be um, now the last thing well, the better ch better best chance to turn around now was 700 feet with 110 knots, three second weight turn around. Yeah. Um, but this gives the aircraft quite some more energy because we have 210 knots and 700 feet. I'd be interested what the difference would be like. Same energy state, but we are faster at a low altitude, so we have overall the same potential and kinetic energy. What the actual difference is between flying at 84, having three second reaction time and having to speed up again, or just gliding from 110 knots with the same energy overall um, to the 84, you know, 81, you know what I mean? So you're talking about an engine failure at 700 feet with, at 110 knots, with, uh, with and without three seconds? Now, the, um, now when we fail the engine, I don't know where we are, if we have time to talk about that, but um, 110 knots at 700 feet is more energy than 84 at 700 feet? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I w I'd be interested in seeing 110 knots at like 500 feet, I don't know. So, putting us at the same energy level, that, like have between, compared to having uh, 84 knots at 700 feet. So, 110 lower, just seeing the difference between the, yeah. First the of all, we're going to fly that one way quick. Yep. Yeah, let's do this 84 and then we'll try what you're, what you're suggesting. Okay, gears down, we're at 84, we're at 3,000, are you ready? Yep. Okay, power comes to you, we're climbing at 84. Positive brake, gear up. 200 feet. Do you want to have one consecutive turn or left and then right again? You're the pilot. You have sure. a failure. Sounds good. Do whatever you feel like you can yep. make happen. But you can maneuver immediately. Quick, we do. 400 feet. 700 feet, and we have an engine failure. Better than the 110 knot thing because there's no change involved in it as well. You will you maneuver right away. Yeah, if you're at 84, you're basically there. If you do an immediate push, you don't have you can catch your airspeed. Uh, if you do that push, huh? Yeah, if you do the push, you can catch your airspeed and you're not screwed. All right, so Lenny, you're talking about uh, doing the uh, 110 knot profile at 500 feet. Yeah, but because then, then we have, or I don't know if it's 500 feet, but we have a more comparable energy state. Yeah, he wants to have the same energy. Total energy. What you're really looking for is at what altitude is the minimum altitude you can turn back. Yeah. Oh. But I think that the uh, 700 at uh, 84, basically, you're, you know, you're at 81, boom, you're, you can turn back. But you gotta be aggressive, you gotta push now. There's no waiting. Yeah, and I think the biggest factor is just being prepared. Yeah, seeing it coming. Yeah. Well, uh, the key there is, is you know, you as long as you treat it that way, every every takeoff that it's going to happen, I think yeah. you'd be ready. Yeah. But if 
if you don't, you're not going to see it coming because you're doing other shit. You're worried about other that, this or that, or your timing going to make it home, uh, or I'm going to make it where I'm supposed to go, or you know, there's all these other different factors that are just going to intrude on your ability to see it. So it's not a, like training. We're doing it over and over and over again. So it's a little bit false doing it that way and thinking that that's going to be your t reaction. No. Yeah. What are we doing now? Any setup? We're going to do the same setup as normal. We're going to be at 84 with the gear and fly with the runway. I'm going to give you the power. You're going to pause the brake, gear up, and then you're going to accelerate to 110. We're going to go to 500 feet, okay. and then you're going to maneuver. Yep. Immediate maneuver, no reaction time. Sounds good. We'll do so. Okay, so you're ready for the problem, whatever it is. All right, there's the end of the runway. Here comes the power. How's the rate? Look here. Okay, now you want to accelerate to 110. Takeaways from this exercise. If your engine failure occurs below turn back altitude, uh, well then, you know, your decision tree is actually pretty simple. You're going to either land straight ahead or you're going to go slightly left or slightly right. Um, and then your choice is, is, do I leave the gear down or put the gear down or do I put it up? You know, the, the, you just don't really have any other options. My nickel is if it's not pavement, then the gear is up. If you have airspeed in excess of your emergency approach speed, which is essentially uh, Dan Greider's minimum maneuvering speed, 1.4 VSO, then uh, you've got options. You can turn. Uh, you can spend more time in the air. You can decide, am I going to uh, be able to turn back to the runway? Uh, all those kind of things like that. But what you have to do is you have to aggressively put the nose down and you have to turn. Uh, you have to put the bank in. You use 45 degrees of bank. Uh, I know you're used to using 30, but uh, use 45 degrees of bank, get that nose down, keep your speed up, make the turn happen, because uh, this is all the energy you have. You have to use it wisely, so, and you get this one shot at it. When your engine's not working, you can't put energy back in the airplane. So there you go. Once you get the turn going, now you can make a decision. Now, do I, uh, uh, do I have suitable ground? Can I make the runway? Can I not? Is there a clearing? Something like that. If it, again, my nickel is, is if it's got pavement, then I can think about the gear. If not, I'm going to be gear up. I mentioned before that I have a takeoff strategy. <laughs> well, I do. And uh, I slept in a Holiday Inn Express last night, so I feel generous and I'm going to share it with you. So my strategy is this, is uh, I'm going to uh, uh, take off. And if I have to use VX to clear an obstacle, I'm going to use VX as my climb speed. If I don't, well, then I'm going to keep the nose down, I'm going to lower the nose, and I'm going to accelerate to my best, best glide speed, whatever that is. In the Bonanza, it's 110 knots. And once I have that energy, now I have options. And I really, really like options. Uh, I really, really like having that extra speed to be able to make that turn happen and uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, 
that's kind of my, my strategy. Once I make the turn, I'm gonna make the judgment. Can I make the runway? I'm not gonna be committed to the runway where I have to do it. What I wanna do is stay in control of the airplane all the way until the, it's, you know, we're not flying anymore. The biggest lesson learned, I think, uh, that I would like you to take away from this is, is that um, <laughs> nobody's perfect, everybody's a human being. At least uh, I suppose everybody watching this video is a human being, and uh, we're all subject to that uh, psychologist thing, that three second startle situation where we're not gonna act for three seconds. So um, what we saw today was is that even if we're at VX and we're low, uh, even with the three second delay, we still have time to maneuver and make decisions. And as long as we get after it and we do it right, then uh, we have room to survive, okay? So that's the biggest lesson learned we have there. The second biggest lesson uh, that I want you to think about is, is all these are decisions that uh, we can make on the ground. We can think about all the different scenarios and uh, my procedures and stuff like that. And uh, we can come up with that stuff and what, what works on my airplane, what are my decision points. And uh, then I make those and I take the runway thinking, okay, this is gonna happen to me today. What am I gonna do? Then I'm ready to go. And I'm ready to think about it and I'm prepared for it because that makes all the difference in the world. You're probably not going to beat that three second time frame, but if you are prepared for it and you think about it, well then you're more than likely uh, not to exceed it by too much and that's the important thing. And I encourage you to put this kind of a training sortie into your training plan and it'll, make, uh, it'll help you prove, uh, get Darwinism on your side instead of being on the wrong side of that. Uh, you don't want to do that. I want to thank Dan Greider for bringing this up. Um, when I first uh, heard the whole thing, I'm thinking, oh, just another speed just another uh, higher speed, more speed, this, all this other stuff, it's just another layer. And uh, then I got to thinking about it and it's actually what I do. Uh, in general, that's it, how I approach this is uh, in the Bonanza, for example, uh, my uh, target speed is 85 knots on final. And then uh, crossing the threshold, I'm gonna target about 80. And that puts me landing somewhere around 75, 74, 73, something like that. Uh, generally, that works out real well for me. So I realized that uh, uh, that's actually pretty close to the speeds that uh, uh, Dan was talking about and the procedures he's talking about. So, you know, I think he's right. You know, we have to have, we have to be cognizant of uh, how we're flying our airplane and do we have enough energy to do the things we need to do. And Beechcraft put up uh, 81 knots as their emergency approach speed uh, for a reason. I think it uh, turns out to be a real good reason. We looked at that in the, this series, and uh, I'm kind of changes my strategy a little bit. Uh, and my strategy had been to use mince, uh, to use my best glide speed and fly that. Uh, all the book says to use the emergency approach speed. I understand that, but I'd always thought because I'd never tried it out like I did today. So what I'm really suggesting to you is, is that you go out and get an instructor and try this out yourself because practice does make perfect. And uh, well, heck, that's what flying's all about is trying to get better every time we go fly, right? So I hope you liked the video, I enjoyed making it. Uh, I learned a lot and I hope you did too. So if you, uh, if you really liked it, hit subscribe because that really helps me out. And uh, hit the bell if you want notifications, I appreciate that. So now what do you do? Go fly. See you next time on Flywire.